Hey everybody, Dr. Anita Jackson here. I'm so excited again to introduce you to one of my authors in our upcoming book, Women of Courage, Women of Destiny, Moving from Fear to Faith to Freedom. Joining me today to really talk a little bit more in depth about what it means to be a woman of courage is Linda Boland smith She is a longtime friend of a close friend of mine and has become a close friend of mine just as well. And she's coming all the way from England, United Kingdom. She's here visiting family, celebrating the holidays, here to start the new year. And I wanted to make sure that I took this time to interview her as she shares her wisdom on what it means to be a woman of courage. So Linda, thank you so much for, it took a while for us to do it, but we're finally here. I'm so honored that you're on the show to share your wisdom about being a woman of courage. Okay, thank you very much, Anita. I'm very glad to be here as well. I'm glad we finally got to do this. Yes, this is awesome. So, Linda, you know, I start off the series with all of our you know, authors and interviewees with the question of, tell us a little bit about you and why you do what you do so well. Okay, well, I began my career working with people, I would say, about 20 years ago. But more recently, in, in London itself, I began to look at the subject of anger and emotional management. In relation to young people and youth, uh, I've been a youth worker for, as I say, about 20 years now. And the subject is very close to my heart. It's a subject of how to manage the strong and the powerful feelings that come about in everyday life for very different circumstances. And that's my expertise, and that's what I have the pleasure to do. Awesome. So with you working with all the women, individuals, you know, not just women, but men and women, um, when it comes to this idea of courage, how do you define courage? Courage is the ability to withstand pressure mm. and integrity while you're doing it. It's a subject that it's dear to my heart, but it's one that takes uh, experience and a lot of practice, to be honest. And that's what I try to pass on to other people. And how do you, what kind of steps would you share with our audience in regards to taking those steps to be courageous? Well, I would say that follow your heart and understand what's important to you. Mm -hmm. In other words, what is the integrity that is important? What do you do and what do you believe when no one is watching and when no one is actually paying attention because you're doing it for your own reasons and you want to stay true to yourself and that's what I say is the first step to courage, being true to yourself. You know, I really appreciate that because with, with our world going through the many challenges and there's so many women right now who are struggling in the area of allowing themselves to show up, show up in their personal life, show up in their business, because we've been conditioned, whether directly or indirectly, whether consciously or unconsciously, to hide, to hold ourselves back. And so now it's time for us to follow our heart and really show up in that kind of way. Um, in working with women, what do you think are the top three challenges that women face that may interfere with their ability to become courageous and really showing up and leading from their heart? Well, I believe that uh, social conditioning has a lot to answer for when it comes to women. Yeah. Women often believe that their opinions or their feelings need to be modified or need to be adapted yes. for the sake of others. It, it's, it's something that we learn as young women and then we carry on into adulthood, particularly when we become mothers. And I believe that, that that conditioning can lead us to not shine and to not be courageous. So the first thing I would say is understand your worth, yes. understand your value, yes. that you matter and that you are important as a woman in this world. Love it. What's number two? Number two would be develop a sense of integrity. Again, I'm going to use that word, integrity, which is being true to yourself, regardless of what others and those around you are doing or saying. So develop that inner moral compass that guides and directs you, despite what others are doing in this world. Yeah, I love the word integrity because it actually also means one. And that oneness means wholeness and completeness. And when you are living from integrity, when you're being true to who you believe you were called to be, who you were designed to be, you tend to feel more balanced. You tend to feel more at peace. And then therefore life tends to actually operate more fully and authentically for you just as well, wouldn't you say? 
absolutely. And I believe that balance is one of the ways to, to remain uh, as stress-free as possible in this world, especially as a woman, because often we take on responsibilities and challenges, not just for ourselves, but for others. And often we feel a sense of responsibility yes. for others. And I believe that balance, in other words, realizing what it is that you can do for yourself and others, but also keeping yourself as a center. In other words, give from a centered and balanced place. Yes. If you look at it as kind of the scales of justice, I think of that, uh, those, those scales that if yes. you put too much pressure on one side, obviously imbalance exists in that way. So think of balance and think of maintaining as less pressure as you can in your everyday life. It almost sounds like you're talking about seeking internal harmony, you know, really being at balance. I'm, so the psychologist in me is not fond of the word balance because I've seen how it tends to trap people, mostly women, <laughs> in, in this, this um, false sense of what it, you should be doing or how we should be looking and all that kind of stuff. But I think from what you're talking about, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that balance is about this sense, this sense of wholeness and harmony and integrity. I'm going to use your word because that's a very powerful word. And so far, you're the only one who's actually talked about it from that perspective. So I really appreciate that. So what would happen if more women sought to become balanced, harmony, or integrous? What do you think would happen? Well, what would happen is a woman would start to feel the pressure lifting because the actual pressure that is put upon us by others or by this world or by society is not often the pressure that is needed. So when a woman becomes aware of her value and her worth, then the balance remains more constant, less yeah. able to tip by the opinions and by the expectations of others. Ooh, that's good. I like that. I hope you I hope you heard what she just said. I almost want her to repeat that. Actually, could you repeat that? Because that's actually really good. It's something I think we need to listen to and pay attention to again. Say that one more time. Okay, so when we accept the value and the worth that we know to be true, we have that centered sense of self and that grounding then we are less prone to be influenced and pressured by the expectations, opinions, and wishes of others that not necessarily are what, what is meant for us to do or, or to be. Right on. Love it. So what was your third thing? So the third thing I would say is be aware that who you are is unique. Yeah. And you've been designed, you yourself, the individual, we all have been designed in a very individual way, and there is no other person to duplicate who we are. So as long as we begin to use the gifts and the talents that we have been born with, and to use those individual patterns of communication and relationship to others, then we will start to develop that sense of self that will take us into being courageous women. Beautiful, powerful, I love it. Hey. <laughs> well, go ahead, girl. So then let's start talking a little bit more deeply about the conversation of fear. You know, and, and what I've been saying throughout the whole entire summit is that fear is not about being afraid of being attacked, although those things definitely do exist and that can happen. But I'm talking about this fear of allowing ourselves to really show up in our gifts and our talents and our skills and our wisdom and our knowledge and our beauty. So many women are, are afraid to be visible, whether that's from an energetic spiritual place or even in our business. So how do you define fear and why do you think this needs to be addressed by women worldwide? I believe that fear is actually a, a root of low self-esteem. Mm. Who I am isn't good enough. Yeah. Who I am isn't worthy enough to succeed or to have an opinion or to be assertive in my opinion. Right and so I believe fear is based in, in low self-esteem, particularly for women. I, I couldn't agree with you anymore because that's where the whole I'm not good enough comes from. I totally agree with you. And my message of I am enough was developed out of recognizing there's fear and there's low self-esteem. There's low sense of self-worth. That's amazing. Yeah. So how do you, how should we address fear? How do we begin to heal that part of ourselves? Because it needs to be healed. Yes, I absolutely agree, Anita. And I think the number one um, purpose in addressing fear is to actually uh, look at where shame exists or I, I want to rephrase that. I don't mean it's a purpose. I mean it's a, it's a quest that we begin to see where are these patterns 
of fear, which have been linked to shame, yes. to the feeling of not being good enough. And that develops very early in life for a lot of people. Right. And where did that come from? Where did those messages come from? And actually to start challenging them. Are they true? You know, do I have um, low self-esteem because someone has said, oh, you're stupid. Oh, you're not really intelligent enough, are you? Or, oh, you're quite clumsy. And gosh, you're not as good as, you know, your sister or your auntie. And, and she excelled and you are not excelling. And those are areas of shame that need to be challenged. And I believe that when we challenge those opinions that developed into shame and, and realize that they are not applicable and they are not true about who we are, then our fear will also start to fade with the shame that exists there as well. So I, I, I have a funny feeling I'm going to have to have you on the show again <laughs> to talk okay. about shame because that's a whole other topic that I really do think shame and guilt. Those two words are words that I personally wish weren't even in the life or in the dictionary. I wish mm -hmm. you have at to use as a reference to an emotion because I have seen it trap women so many times. I'm like, I tell people I really don't feel guilt. And because most people have the wrong understanding of guilt and shame anyway. So we'll just come back to that. I'll, I'll have you on the show. We'll have a long conversation on that one. Because I okay. think it could be addressed for sure. So let's talk about faith. What is faith? How do you define it? Well, I believe faith. There's a scripture that I like to define, uh, use to define faith. And that is Faith is the evidence yes. of not seeing the substance of things hoped for. Yes. I believe that faith is actually believing in something that you can't see. It's not tangible, but you have hope and you have belief that it can come about and that it will come about as you put your effort, your perhaps your prayer, but your own uh, intention towards what it is you believe is, is the right thing for you in this world. You know, 2016 has been a very difficult year for so many people, um, personally, physically, mentally, emotionally, especially financially. And sometimes when we're trying our hardest, we're doing everything we think we know how to do to stay in faith, and then if we're not seeing the results that we hope for, and maybe that we even need, it interferes, it interferes with our ability to be faithful. So if you could give one of your strategies to helping us develop that muscle of faith, what would that be? I believe that we need to not look at what the present in our immediate circumstance is dictating to us mm -hmm. and realize that what we hope for, as long as the hope is for a better result or a better outcome, whether that be in provision of finance, in uh, relationship with others or in perhaps it's an education something that we've been desiring and that we've been working for that we mustn't let the very present circumstances dictate and cause us to lose faith and to lose hope but to actually again to go back to that word belief but to believe that as long as we continue in a positive path continue in what we hope for and to put our efforts into it that we've, you know, we've been given the gift of, of many skills and talents, as you said earlier, continue to look at what the end result is and that we would like it to be rather than what the present circumstances are dictating. It's, there's a quote, and I'm not sure who said it, but some, it went something like, um, your faith needs to be bigger than your fear in order for, and now I just kind of lost it, but it's something along those lines, like your faith needs to be bigger than your fear in order to manifest the things that you're wanting to manifest in your life. And um, it, it took a couple of years for me to realize that my faith wasn't bigger than my fear. My fear was bigger than my faith. Mm -hmm. And how I deal with fear is I'm a workaholic. I push, I work, I create, I produce, because that's how I was conditioned to believe I needed to address fear. Um, but now, as I have matured, and of course, with my background as a psychotherapist, and so your background has you know, not the same background that I do, we have learned a few things over the years that faith is not as difficult as we make it to be. It's just, as you said, really, the key word is having hope in something bigger and greater than yourself and then staying true to that path, being consistent and, and moving in that direction of the end result, the hope, the goal, the dream, the desire, whatever that may be, staying on that path. Yeah, I love it. 
So let's talk about freedom. So the reason why I wanted to talk about freedom is, and I'm, I'm talking about it from an internal perspective that eventually manifests externally. So from a spiritual, energetic, visceral perspective, and then from a tangible, physical, environmental perspective. So how do you define freedom internally, and then how do you define freedom externally? Okay, so I'll start with freedom internally. Freedom to be believing in myself is a big definition of internal freedom for me. And it's something that I try to pass on to others in my work. Believing in your skill, your talent, your worth will cause a person to feel free in who they are. So I call that the ultimate internal freedom, to just feel free in who you are, to not fear the judgment of others. Again, that fear that's linked to shame and low self-worth, but to feel that I am enough, I do have what it takes to, to be and to succeed and to, to accomplish many goals in life. And that to me is the ultimate internal freedom. So that's how I would describe internal freedom. And external freedom, I believe, is visible to others in that, that, that confidence, I think, might be a good way to link freedom to external um, circumstances. I have confidence that what it is that I'm working towards or what it is I believe is the best outcome for me will take place. And that will display a, an, an attitude of freedom, I believe, would probably be one way of putting that. It would be an attitude that freedom is then uh, displayed in, in all that I do, or as much as possible in all that I do, because of that inner confidence and belief. Yeah. You know, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that you're here, and I've got you as a captive audience now. I want to ask you a few more questions that aren't on the list. But one is, you know, with your expertise in working with pretty severe types of personalities and situations, so I know that you have the expertise to really support someone to becoming unlimited, becoming their highest and their best. What do you think will happen when a woman becomes courageous and actually starts to go after her dreams and desires? How do you think that's going to affect our family, our community, and the world? Well, I'm fortunate enough to say that I've witnessed women move into that area of freedom uh, in the work that I've done. I have worked in prisons. I've worked with people in the criminal justice system back in England. Uh, and I have seen a, a very dysfunctional internal self become free. And with that freedom is this renewed hope. And I think I'm going to use the word hope here as a very strong um, evidence, again, of, of an internal freedom. Because that, that hope that, yes, I can do and I can be and it doesn't matter what my past has been, I can move forward. And when I see women develop in that inner internal confidence and freedom from shame, freedom from judgment, freedom from the constraints of the past and their experiences from the past, that's when I see hope. And it's, it's visible in the person's attitude, it, even in the way they look. I've had people physically transform in their facial expressions where it's become very obvious to others. Almost like they came alive, huh? Exactly. A life begins to develop within their internal self and it becomes evident in their external self. Yeah. It's very exciting to witness. I think 2017 is going to be a year where women are finally becoming courageous enough to say, um, I am who I am. I fully love and accept myself unconditionally, unapologetically. And with that truth, I'm comfortable enough to let everyone else be exactly where they are, wherever they are. And then I, my hope is once she becomes that courageous, it will become infectious. It will start this ripple effect. It will yeah. create a tipping point that causes us to go home and impact our families. And then that will spread and start to impact our communities. And then that will spread and they'll start to connect our cities and our states and our nation and then eventually the world. What's yeah. your hope for women in this new year? I would say that women begin to release and break free from the shackles of judgment and opinion from childhood into adulthood and begin to see their, their quality, their character, their skill, their gifting as who they really are 
not who they've been told they are, but actually using the positive that has existed from day one and begin to reject messages of discouragement, messages of uh, disempowerment, because I believe power is in hope and is in confidence. And so my hope and my freedom for women, my hope and freedom for women is that they will see the past as the past and the future as something very powerful and very um, unlimited, actually. I think I'm going to use the word that you've used already, yeah. as unlimited. I love it. I love it. Um, so what's the destiny for you? What's your destiny? What's next? Okay. Well, you know, for me, I believe that uh, I have a lot of experience working in the area of um, emotional management, shame management, and freedom. And I believe that's why I was very drawn to, to the book title that you've, uh, that you've chosen for our anthology, because I believe that that is the future. Freedom to move into powerful uh, lifestyles, but powerful um, influences and motivations. And I see it as a very positive and infectious thing. And that's what I would like to say my future holds, just a continuation of being able to support women as well as men, but I do have a very soft spot for empowering women, I have to say, and letting that ripple effect take place. I would love that to continue and to even build stronger in the new year. Awesome, beautiful. So everyone, you can see that Linda has a heart just like mine, like all of our other authors and guest speakers who've been a part of this video summit. We are here because we definitely believe in your future. And we also know from our own personal experience that when you, when you become courageous enough to, to face the fear, face the shame, face the guilt, face the fear that moves you to faith, that moves you to freedom, then it will cause a ripple effect in your life as well as everyone else around you. And so I just want to encourage you to stay connected to us because our book's coming out in March. And we really want you to have this in your hand because then this conversation of being courageous goes even deeper as each of my authors go really deep into sharing their stories and telling you exactly what they did to overcome their that moment of fear that moved them to faith, that moved them to freedom. So Linda, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule and being here with me. I so honor and appreciate you and your wisdom. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anita. My pleasure. All right, everybody, have a fantastic day or night or whatever time it is where you are. Know that we love you, we believe in you, and to your unlimited success. Check out the link below for our book. Take care of you. Bye-bye.